Hey, my friend, Ezekiel chapter 40, palm tree decorations were on its side pillars on each side and its stairway had eight steps. So what does that speak of? That speaks of this east gate. It's an amazing place. And it's speaking of the future temple of God, the one that comes down with Jesus when he returns after that time of great trouble that's coming on the earth. And I believe before that time, I believe that he takes his bride away. Just like we see Joseph had a bride, his bride was with him already in his palace, in his home before that seven year time of great famine came where he saved all of his brothers. So we're seeing a glimpse. And, and, and here's the thing, guys. Ezekiel goes in chronological order, right? We saw chapters 36 and 37. Israel was restored, right? Brought from the four corners of the world. We had an episode on that, my last episode, where, where God brings them back to the land of Israel. And, they, and he blesses them. Even before they come fully back to him, he starts blessing them like that prodigal son. And then we see chapters 38 and 39 of Ezekiel, where we see this great war that happens. And it's like the war that's happening right now in Israel. We see Russia, which is the land of Magog, according to Josephus, the oldest documents, right? And then we see Turkey involved, right? Which will be like Gomer and Tagarma, these places that are right around Turkey, that area, that landmass. And they join in on this evil alliance. We see Persia, which is Iran, joining in on this evil alliance. Iran's already been involved in this big time, this war that's in Israel right now. It, it, that's an amazing thing. And it could be the same war. But we see that fulfilled, and then after that, in chronological order, we see Ezekiel chapters 40 through 48, and it speaks all of this new temple and the millennial reign of Christ. Even C.H. Spurgeon believed that, my friend. So there's been it's not something new, okay? It's been around a long time. The very first early church fathers, before Augustine, before all those guys, who the guys that were discipled by John, they believed that Jesus was going to come back physically and rule and reign from Jerusalem, just as the scriptures say. So it's exciting. We're going to get more into it right now. All right. So this is a beautiful description of some of the, the pillars. Uh, the palm trees will be carved into them. And it's describing that beautiful temple that God's going to bring. And here's another one in Ezekiel 41. And he measured its length, 20 cubits, and its width, 20 cubits. So it's like a square, right? And before the sanctuary, and he said to me, this is the most holy place. So we got a, a glimpse of what the holy of holies would look like, where the Ark of the Covenant sat, which was also the mercy seat. And that's where the Lord sat down to speak to Moses when he was at the tabernacle before the temple, right? But it's a 20 foot by 20 foot square. And it's just this beautiful, Beautiful, beautiful place. Lots of, of great uh, detailed description of this new temple from Ezekiel chapter 40 all the way to the end of Ezekiel chapter 48. So here we go. Let's look at some more of it right now. So it says here, a human face toward the palm tree on one side and a young lion's face toward the palm tree on the other side. So these are the, the decorations. I know this is kind of goofy right here, but there's decorations carved into this new temple. It's just this this beautiful, beautiful place. It's the house of God where he's dwelling during this thousand year reign of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So here, this is just so cool. Don't you love this stuff? All right, let's get back into it. Here we go. And then we see this. We see in chapters, uh, the next few uh, parts of the chapter, this focus in on this east gate. Now, this is the golden gate, as it's called today, right? This is what it looks like in Jerusalem. This was built by the Ottoman Turks, this outer wall here. And there was a guy named Solomon the Magnificent. Right around 1517, uh, he built this wall and he completed it and he sealed it shut because he heard the Jewish Messiah was going to enter by it. But in the next episode, so you're going to see how he actually he actually fulfilled prophecy by doing that by having this golden gate sealed shut and no one has entered by it so <laughs> it's just an amazing thing that god would use even the enemies his enemies he always has to complete his will just like right now we see russia we see iran we see turkey and some of these other countries and they're ganging up being a big bully against Israel, this little tiny country and, and tiny population compared to theirs. 
and they're just being big bullies and God doesn't like that. And he loves his people, Israel, still. You need to read the scriptures. Read Romans chapter 11 in the New Testament if you don't believe that. By the way, guys, this is my new book, See Jesus in the Old Testament. Check it out. The link is down in the description below. And in this book, you will find all of the places where Jesus is found in the Old Testament. Huge pictures and types of him, prophecy of him, psalms, prophetic psalms of him, even the Proverbs. You're going to see all of it in this book. You can get it on Amazon. It's available right now, my friend, in hardcover like this one or paperback or the Kindle version. And I kept the price as low as I could. So, hey, God bless you on that one. I, I know he will bless you because he's blessed me as I've discovered Jesus in the Old Testament scriptures, just like Jesus expects us to when you read Luke chapter 24. So check that book out if you get a chance. So let's get back into the presentation, my friend. Here we are. All right, so the scripture continues in Ezekiel 43, and behold the glory of the God of Israel. I love that. The God of Israel was coming from the way of the east. So you know, my friend, that in Zechariah, and it might even be in Isaiah, where Jesus comes down, touches down on the Mount of Olives when he returns and he will restore Israel. They will see him whom they pierced and they'll mourn for him. But he's gonna come down and that Mount of Olives is gonna split in two and there'll be like this, probably like a valley. In fact, the scriptures do say it's like a beautiful valley with the, the living, the tree of life uh, where there's fruit uh, harvested every month out of this tree. The leaves are for healing for the nations. The river flows from the temple. It's just gonna be magnificent. It's gonna be beautiful. Beautiful. So let's get back into the scripture and check out some more of it right now. I'll check this out, you guys. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was coming from the way of the east. That's the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives is east of Jerusalem, of that temple mount, right where the temple's going, the new one. And his voice was like the sound of many waters and the earth shone from his glory, like the sparkles you see in this little video in the background, this, the beautiful sparkles off of the water. I love that, don't you? And the glory of the Lord entered the house by way of the gate facing east. That's the east gate. It's like the north east corner of the temple mount you guys amazing stuff let's continue in this and it says here it says and the spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner courtyard wow and behold the glory of the lord filled the house the Holy Spirit was just filling the house, right? And then I heard him speaking to me from the house. And what does he say to Ezekiel? He says, son of man, this is the, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet. This is what God says. And there I will dwell among the sons of Israel forever. Forever, not just some short period of time. This will be something forever. So when the Messiah, Jesus, when he does return, he'll return to this, this east gate and the glory of the Lord will fill the temple. It's going to be magnificent, you guys. I can't wait for Jesus to return for that. But first, he's going to return for his bride. And we see that in Joseph's story. It's spelled out in my book here. You can check that out. And also, the if you don't want to do that, you can check it out for free in the playlist right here, How to See Jesus in the Old Testament. You'll see all the old, older episodes. Episodes, but check out the Joseph series. There's like 17 parts. Joseph was a huge picture and type of Christ. He was rejected by his own soul for pieces of silver. He was later falsely accused and sent down to the place of the condemned, right? And what happens down there? Two were with him. One lives, one's cursed. And then he was later raised up out of that place of the condemned. He was brought before the throne. He was the only one found worthy to reveal the dreams. Like Jesus in Revelation 5 was the only one found worthy to take the scroll out of the right hand of the father. And then he was given a Gentile bride and all had to bow to him except for he who sat on the throne. He was given a Gentile bride, right? And she was with him probably in a nice palace in his home, right? 
And then what happens? There's a seven year time of great trouble, the famine. And that's when he saves all of Israel. He forgives them, shows great mercy. The word in Hebrew is chesed, right? Loving kindness and tender mercies toward his brothers. And he saves them during a seven year time of great trouble. The Bible is the best commentary for the Bible. This is the most important thing you read right here is the Bible, God's word, my friend. So, hey, click on this playlist right here, how to find Jesus in the Old Testament. You'll see many places where he is. And don't forget, check out my book on Amazon, my friend. God bless you. I love you, my friend.